Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode is Light in the Valley, How I Cracked the Code. But before we get to that, we have a couple of housekeeping items to update you on. First is people asked about the pattern, the pattern for the quilt that was behind me before. And that was this, it's called Diamond Lights from Derek Lockwood. Derek is spelled D-E-R-E-C-K. He has a website. Um, he's got lots of interesting patterns. I, uh, this one is the one that appealed to me. So this is the one that I made. Very fun. Second is people ask me about the dog bed stuffing. And I don't really know where the stuffing goes after it leaves the shop. We have had different people over the years who have asked for our scraps, and I am more than happy to keep them out of landfills. So if you're looking for somewhere, I would try your local quilt guild. I would try your local quilt shop. And if you don't have any success there, I would try actually a dog shelter and see if anybody's making them dog beds and try to contact them that way. The other item is an update on the pattern for chip off the old block. I've showed this before in two other episodes. It's by Kathy Brown from the Teacher's Pet. She um, has recently retired, which I did not know. I've been ordering the pattern for years and now find that she is not selling anything at the present time. She's transferring all of her copyrights to her daughter and she will let me know when her daughter is up and selling again and then i will have the pattern back in stock i do have just a couple more patterns left here if you want one you can call me and i will mail it to you and speaking of chip off the old block this is the one that was in a baggie a couple weeks ago and i am quite pleased um, it's a little small um, I had said I wanted to set it 9 by 11 with 99 blocks. I got 120 blocks, so it's set 10 by 12. But with 4 inch blocks, that's only 40 by 48. So I'm thinking of expanding it with the scraps from the Derek Lockwood pattern that was um, behind me before. And I think um, these pieces will work. Cut these maybe into 2 inch pieces or 1 inch pieces and make a little border and make it bigger. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, it was a fun quilt to make, and that's the housekeeping for today. Now for my opinion. Just because a pattern instruction tells you to do something a certain way doesn't mean you need to do that. Hmm, you haven't heard me say that before, have you? This is an example of where I changed something. This is Krista Moser's Ribbon Twist. It is a free download from her website, Krista Moser, K-R-I-S-T-A-M-O-S-E-R.com. And you can just go to her website and download this pattern. It's quite fun to make. What problem did I have with this quilt? Let me show you. In Krista's instructions, after making all these beautiful diamonds, and putting them together, she has you cut this off so that you get a straight edge. You've already got a straight edge on the bottom and the top, but the two sides she has you cut off. I could not bear to cut off these beautiful diamonds that I had made. So I decided to make side setting triangles. Now there's a border on it, so it's a little hard to see here with the border being the same fabric. But can you see that diamond, I mean diamond, that triangle here? I used the same ruler that I used to make the diamonds and just made a half diamond that fit in. And that solved my problem that I didn't have to cut off these beautiful diamonds. So if you like this pattern, go to her website, download it for free, and have as much fun as I did making this quilt. Now today's episode, Light in the Valley, How I Cracked the Code. Some time ago, a customer came in and asked me if I'd ever heard of the Light in the Valley quilt. I had not, and she showed me pictures, 
and I just thought it was stunning, 3D, unbelievable. She explained to me that the pattern was not available, that the person who wrote the pattern sold it to a quilt shop. The quilt shop uh, put a trademark on it and then decided not to sell the pattern, but only sell completed quilts. I cannot verify any of this information. This is just what I've been told. Nothing gets me more than somebody telling me I can't make something. So I studied the pictures and tried to figure it out. I had graph paper, I tried EQ, I tried uh, construction paper squares. And I remembered that I had read something that it was based on a Bargello needlepoint pillow. And so I Googled Bargello needlepoint and I found this fabric on spoon flower. It's called Bargello Needlepoint, let's see, Bargello Needlepoint in Marigold, and it's by Gigi and May. And I did just check the other day, and this fabric is still up on the website. So if you want to make this quilt, you can go ahead and print out this uh, picture of this fabric, because this is the exact pattern that I used. I wanted something, after looking at all the pictures, I wanted something that had four of one color and four of another color. I chose the teals and the oranges. So if you look at this pattern, my yellow is the black here. There's two rows of this gold. So one is the lightest of the orange, the second is the next lightest. The Third is the first row of the yellow, and the darkest orange kind of maroon is the, the set, or first yellow. Um, my white here is my lightest of the blue, next lightest blue, next lightest blue, darkest blue, and my black is the black here. As you can see, there's one stitch, two stitches, three stitches, and four stitches. I decided that one stitch was going to be a half inch, two was an inch, three was an inch and a half, and four was two inches. As I studied this, I found that there are seven strip sets, and I just followed them along. I called this one number seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then it repeats back two, three, four, and so on. Now, if you look at this, you will see that the yellows are alternated. This one is in the middle of these two. So you have to make an adjustment shifting the fabrics to get, make that happen. I don't want to get all in the weeds here. I think I'll lose you if I try to say each and every strip set. So rather than do that here, we are going to have a Zoom class that will go over this so people can actually learn how to do it. But let's talk about making the strip sets for a minute. Once you have your sequence of your strip sets, you need to sew them together. And to make sure that your strip sets don't bow, you want to sew one this way, one this way, and one this way. Now, if you watched Rob Appel's video on strip sets, he said, don't do that. I love Rob Appel. He's entertaining. His videos are amazing. I love him, but he's wrong on this one. He's right in one respect. He says the reason that you don't want to sew this way is so that you don't lose any of your strip set up at this end. That's where he's 100% correct. But his assumption is that when you're sewing two st strip sets together where you've sewn these this way and now you have to sew this one this way, he's assuming you go like this. 
and even these up. Well, yes, if you sew down to there, look at how much of this fabric you've lost. You've lost everything of your strip set past this point. That's why you don't do it that way. You always keep your pieces lined up up here. So you would take this, line it up, and you'll see that this is where this comes to here. You go to your sewing machine, you sew still from bottom to the top, but now you haven't lost anything up here. I've had far, far too many customers, including two employees, who have complained that their strips are bowed. And as soon as I ask, did you sew one strip in one direction and one in the other, the answer is always no. So you really want to make your strip sets sewing in opposite directions. And you can see here on this, this is a leftover strip set from the diamond lights that I did. And even though I've cut some off of here, this is the bottom. And you can see on the bottom here, nothing lines up. Um, these two pieces were sewn together because I sewed these in pairs all this way. So the alternate ones, which this would be an alternate one, sewn this way. And you can clearly see that I did not line this up with the top of this. Otherwise, I would have lost some of the strip set at the top. So you really still want to sew in both directions, but lining always up at the top. So now, You've made all your strip sets, you've cut them in the widths that they're supposed to be, and now you need to sew them together. You can see in this quilt that none of the seams meet. The, this seam meets the middle of this one, and so on and so forth. So how are you going to accomplish that? You have to do a lot of marking. When I first started making this quilt, I was marking every other piece. And as I went on, I found that it worked much, much better to um, alternate and to do, mark every piece. So I have a black here. My black pen is not gonna show on my black. So I am not gonna be able to get that one. But I just take any ruler, a smaller ruler better, and I start marking a half inch so that it's the middle of the inch. So I mark, can't do the black, can't see it. Mark, and I just keep marking each piece with the exception of the black that I can't see on. And then I'm going to pin. And if you're not a pinner and don't want to pin, this probably isn't a good quilt for you. So I take, I don't know, can you see my black marks here? I take my black mark and I line it up with this seam. And I put in a pin. And I do that all the way across. See this seam here goes to this black mark. And I just pin all the way across. Now, mind you, I have minus um, six strip, stri six strips down each, so it's 72 inches. So this is not a fast process. This is not gonna be a three one yard quilts in an afternoon. While I love those, they're fun to make and easy and fast. This quilt is gonna be more of a labor of love. And once I get them all pieced and pinned, excuse me, I sew them all together Go to the sewing machine, sew it 
and then you, well, it's hard to see, but they meet halfway. And I press between each and every piece. I know people don't like to press um, some directions, and I even think Derek Lockwood's did in his quilt, had you start with one piece, add the next, add the next, add the next, add the next, and so on, till you got your whole block. I sew two together, two together, two together, maybe a third on, on these skinny ones. Then I might sew this section together, leave that. Start another section of a, two or three together, two together, two together, sew them together, leave that. I do all in sections and I press between each and every one of them. I find if you're not pressing in between and you wait, a lot of people like to wait to the very end to press the whole thing. If you've got like a seam flipped in the wrong direction and you've got this big, huge quilt, you're not gonna wanna take a seam rip or flip it and, and go over to the sewing machine and fix that one little bit. But if you have just two strips together and you find that, it's really easy to go back to the sewing machine and fix it. So I really like pressing in between, sewing in sections. When I finally get the two halves together, then I sew the last seam in the middle down the, um, to putting the two halves together. And I'm quite pleased with it, although I am thinking it's a little skinny. This is 50 inches wide, uh, about 71 inches, because each strip is 72, but you lose a half an inch at the top and a half an inch at the bottom. So I think it's really about 71. I'm thinking I might like to add one more repeat width, and I might need six more inches on the bottom, we'll see. But this is my version of Light in the Valley, and I cracked the code with a picture of a spoon flower fabric. Amazing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you.